Hello again. Welcome to another session of Asynchronous JavaScript. In this session, we are going to discuss about async and await and how async and await are better than the promises. In our last session, we discussed how to fetch the country's data using the fetch API and how to make use of the promises and how promise chaining works. So let me comment this code and let me write our function function async and here what I do I just return hello world and let me make it console.log function and we know that it prints the hello world so nothing surprising and now let me make use of async keyword before the function now let's go and save it now you can see that something new that is promise so whenever you use the async keyword before the function it always returns the promise we can see that it returns the promise which is fulfilled with the value hello world and this return hello world statement is equal to return promise dot result of hello world comment it you can see that promise and here you can see fulfilled and hello world and we know that how to consume the promise so in order to consume the promise, we just need to make the call func async and then then method data and here we just use console.log data and we know that it will print the hello world you can see that this console statement executed first and then this hello world got executed so whenever you use the async before the function it always returns the promise and it executes in the asynchronous way now instead of resolving the promise immediately let us create a promise that get resolved after the one second so let me remove this here i am going to create the promise constant promise equal to new promise we know that promise will take the executor function that will have the resolve and reject functions so resolve and reject if you are new to the promise please watch my video on promise i will mention the link in the description of the video let us add set timeout so I just want to resolve this promise after the one second so give the thousand milliseconds which is one second and here we are going to resolve it so resolve hello world we need to return the promise you can see the result hello world after the one second instead of Printing it immediately here. We are resolving it after one second. So you see the result after one second. So so far so good Now let us introduce the keyword await So now here we are returning the promise. So instead of returning the promise what I will do I just save it in one variable constant result equal to and here before the promise I am going to use the keyword called await Okay, so what this await will do the keyword await will make javascript to wait until the promise get settled and returns its result so which means here this await will make javascript to wait until the promise is fulfilled means here we are created the promise and this is going to be fulfilled or resolved after the one second so or till one second the javascript has to wait because this promise is going to be resolved after the one second 
and once that is completed then the result of this promise so the result of the promise is hello world result will have the value hello world let's go and print console dot log result now before we save it let me comment this code and let's just make call func async and now let us save the file you can see that hello world is printed after one second here this statement will be executed after the one second this statement has to wait until the await completes its process means until await settles the promise it has to wait let's say if you add one more line here console dot log after await now you can see that first it will print the hello world which is result of this promise then only it will print the after await so this await will block the execution of the code so here after wait will be printed after await completes its process the, but the important thing here is it doesn't block the code which is outside of this asynchronous function which means if you go and write one statement here like console.log not just console.log you can have any code and here let's say after function call and now can you guess it what will be the output go and save it you can see the first after function call then hello world then after await now let me explain you how it is executing here we made function async call and what it will do it will come here and this is asynchronous function and here we created the promise and that will be resolved after one second only and so here in the next line here we have await promise so what this await will do it will make javascript to wait until this promise is settled and returns its result so basically this promise will be resolved after one second only and once the promise is settled and returns the result then it will save that result in the result variable and then we are printing these two then these two lines get executed here this await keyword will pass the execution of these two lines but it won't stop the execution of the statements that are outside of this asynchronous function so that's the reason we can see that after function call will be executed first then we can see that hello word then you can see that after await and another important point and interview question also this await keyword will be used inside the asynchronous function only so if you don't have this async keyword before the function and if you use the await keyword then it will throw the error saying that await is only valid in async function so this await function cannot be used inside the normal function but in async function now let us see how to fetch the country's data using fetch and async await so let me comment this code so we have already written the method called get the country data in our last session and we use the fetch and promises to fetch the data and print the data so here i am going to write the function and same get country data which accept country name and here i am going to make it as async function and inside that constant response equal to here i am going to call this fetch method with uh, url we know that this fetch will return the promise so i am going to use the await keyword before this promise and we know that when you use the await keyword before the promise this await keyword will make the javascript to wait until it returns the result of the promise so now this response variable will be having the value that is result of the promise that is written by the this fetch call so let us go and print it console.log resp response let's save it 
and now here I am going to make the call get country data and I pass Sweden and let's go and see the console we can see that response so now this await promise statement has returned the result of the promise so normally if you just use without await what will be the value save it you can see that promise so if you don't use the await it return the promise but when you use the await it will return the result of the promise so this is the difference and if you just go and expand it you can see that promise result is response here and when you use the await here now you can see that directly response value so instead of promise now we can see the result of the promise so this response is having the method called json right so in our last session we have seen that once you make the call then we got the response and after the response we have the response.json so now what we need to do constant data equal to normally we use resp dot json if you go and print this data so let's see what it will return so it returns the promise so let us use the await keyword again let's go and see now you can see the country's data so here just two lines of code we have written and here how much code you have written first we got the promise then we consumed this promise then we got the promise again which is result.json and then we return this result.json then again we have consumed to that then we got the data and here just two lines first you use the await keyword before the promise that is written from the fetch api and then we got the response and we know that this response will have the json method which again returns the promise so here we are settling this promise using the await keyword then we got the final result which is country data and we know that after getting country data we have a method called render country and which takes the country data as input and prints the output now let us call that render country of so we know that we need to destructure the output because this response is having the array of data but we need only first object so that's why we are destructuring this array here you need to pass the if you see the result because the country cannot read property of flag of undefined okay because we need to pass the data here save it and you can see that country result here we know that after getting the country result it is very easy to get the neighbor country so now let me copy the same code again paste it here now we have to fetch the data of the border country so we know that country data at borders will give the border and after that we made the fetch call again here so now instead of that what i do just instead of returning constant border data equal to fetch means it will return the promise so await of this one they may be border response after that we know that constant border data equal to because this await fetch will return the response and on response again we need to make call of json method so here what i do await border response dot json so this will give the border data let's go and print that log border data you can see that country data is not defined in get country data okay so country data is not available it should be data save it after getting the border data we just render it 
So render country of border data. Let us go and see the result. We can see that Finland. So here you can see that total we didn't we never so he so using a sync and await we never used promises and we never used so using and async so using and async so using async and await it is straightforward and here we didn't make use of the promises like chaining the promises or consuming the promises and we just used async and await so in our next session we discuss more on async and await and how to do the parallel calls and how error handling can be done when you are using the async and await so thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed